The countdown is on just about six months to go until the Paris Olympic Games kick off and Team Canada is hard at work training to bring home the gold. And we're getting a look inside some training facilities today. Ryan Atkinson, Director of Performance Services with the Canadian Sport Institute Ontario joins us now. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm great. Look, I'm looking behind you here. I don't see a lot of action, but I understand there are some athletes training at your site right now. Yes, we've got a handful. We've got a few wheelchair basketball athletes and a swimming athlete who's just shown up. Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be a bit of a quieter days for whatever reason. Um, but, uh, but yes, it does ebb and flow over the course of the day, over the course of the weeks, depending on whether sports have training camps, competitions coming up. Um, so yeah, it's, sometimes it's very, very busy here, very loud with the music pumping. But right now, it's a, we picked a quiet time. Okay, the calm before the storm. We know Canada is going all in on these summer games with some 10,000 athletes headed to Paris. So what is the sense among people training right now? Are they feeling confident? I think quite confident. We do as much as we can uh, from a Team Canada perspective, whether that's us at the Canadian Sport Institute Ontario or folks at the Canadian Olympic Committee or the national sport organizations that we support. We, we do as much as we can to leave no stone left unturned um, so that we can ultimately support the performance, health and well-being of these athletes in the lead up to the Olympic Games. Now with these, Games. with these games happening in Paris, we've got about a six hour a time <laughs> difference. So how does someone get ready for that time zone difference? Do athletes begin shifting their bed time? time ahead of the competition. Yeah, they'll typically stage or, or do a prep camp in the lead up to the games in the same time zone as the games are at. So they'll typically arrive uh, two to three weeks out uh, from their actual competition date, uh, depending on the sport, maybe earlier, maybe a little bit later, and, uh, and acclimatize to the environment, acclimatize to the time zone, and, um, and begin their preparation with their team. So they can really build their, uh, their, their team culture in that centralized core environment in the lead up to the competitions. Obviously, you want to hit your peak when the Olympics kick off again in about six months from now. So do you kind of ease into training before you hit things really hard, maybe in the, I don't know, a couple weeks before the games kick off? <laughs> well, I'd say that now things are pretty full on. Uh, this is a bit of a condensed Olympic and Paralympic cycle. It's three years instead of the typical four. So a lot of athletes actually took very short breaks following the last Olympic and Paralympic Games. And they've been training pretty much full on over the last three years in, in the lead up to this. They've had multiple competitions, World Championships, um, Pan Am, Par Para Pan Am Games uh, in the lead up to, to where we're at right now. And ultimately, most of them are just vying for their uh, spots to compete at the games um, with Olympic and Paralympic qualification events coming up in the next couple of months. So they are really peaking and, and prepping and fine tuning from here on in. They are very well trained, they're very well prepared, and now it's just a matter of finding those little details that are going to help them achieve uh, their ultimate podium potential. For sure, and that focus, I really respect that. We know some of these events, by the way, are taking place outside. So how does that factor into training right now? Yeah, we have athletes who are doing environmental preparation, uh, making sure that they are prepared for the, the climate that they're going to be facing when it comes to the games. And we're used to this kind of uh, preparation. Rio uh, in 2016 was quite quite hot and humid. Tokyo, similarly, and then in previous to that. So uh, we do a lot of uh, heat and environmental adaptation training with our athletes in our environmental chamber here behind me in our sport lab. Um, so the athletes can acclimatize to the environment before do they get to the games and get some of the positive benefits of the heat uh, training and heat that they would uh, they normally get in those those first few days um, of being exposed to that so we'll try to do some of those preparations before they get there and then they're also doing uh, a lot of preparation preparation events in uh, similar environments in the lead up to it so when they get to the games it's a familiar environment it's a familiar um, familiar climate so that it's really um, there shouldn't be much new that they're experiencing when they're there but they've prepared and done all those little steps along the way to make sure that uh, it's a as comfortable and familiar of an environment as possible yeah you don't want it to be a shock to the system okay I have a non-athletic question for you for us here at home not headed to Paris who are not Olympic athletes how can we train to be better fans 
Train to be better fans. Well, the first step would just be following along with Team Canada. So you can visit the Canadian Olympic Committee website. They have uh, great uh, news and trackers for, for athletes who are participating in the games or trying to qualify for the games. Um, it's really a good way to just become familiar with the various sports. Um, they profile the sports and, and the various athletes who will be uh, competing or preparing to compete. And then obviously following along with local news channels like City, T uh, City News to be able to uh, track along with them, track along with the games once they're, once they're on the way. Giving us a shout out. I appreciate that. Hey, best of luck to you. Best of luck to all the athletes. I know you got a lot of work coming your way. Ryan Atkinson, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much, Melissa. I appreciate it.